So here's my maple setup. Uh, we got our finishing pad over here. So this syrup's been brought up to about 215, 216 degrees. So it's ready to finish on the propane so I don't burn it on the fire. Uh, this is just a warming pot. I keep this on low and that uh, gets syrup ready or gets sap ready to go into one of the pans over here. Got a reservoir up on there. Not exactly food grade, but that's fine. Couple buckets that I use. Found these really cool lids. They're threaded and they have a rubber gasket made by Leak Tight. And um, they let you throw your buckets in a sled if it's snowing or in a wheelbarrow if you need to tote them around. Pretty easy. Old coffee pitcher I use for either putting sap in or juggling sap from one pot to another. This is the barrel stove, typical barrel stove kit. Highly recommended six foot stack. Very cool. Had to drill some holes in the uh, barrel stove kit over by the uh, damper because it doesn't come with any. I don't know what their plan is to attach it. I guess they figure you're gonna attach it to the wall. Um, but without that, there's really no way to attach the pipe. So I drilled four holes in the cast iron. It actually drills really easily. It's not a real hard metal. Um, and this is the barrel stove. See lots of people on YouTube doing this style um, where you cut out the centerpiece where the pans go, leave a little tab, bend those over, set your, pa set your pans in there. And I just got a little tin foil on the hose here just to keep a little heat off the rubber. Um, this is just a cheap um, float valve for a toilet. And I'll put a link to that, the one I use. It costs like 12 bucks, but I, I seem to replace it quite often because it does have soft rubber in it to seal. Um, very important that sap is flowing through that at all times or it'll melt the rubber inside. But, you know, they're only 12 bucks and they're here in two days from Amazon Prime. So, um, here's the fire. Followed some of the instructions I saw and I put a couple inches of sand on the bottom and that really seems to help. I also put this on a rolling base, real simple, just a couple screws. Um, my thought was that I was going to burn out front and then I could roll it in and out of the garage, but that didn't work. Okay, so there was a few things that I wanted to point out about the stove, um, kind of some gotchas that I thought might help. Um, the first is you have to remember that these steam trays, these full-size steam pans, they're not vertically sided. Um, so what that means is they're narrower at the bottom, which means um, this cut here needs to be well, it needs to be wider at the top opening than the bottom. So you have, you've got to figure out how to do that. I'm not going to try to tell you because my way was not great. Um, the other piece is you're going to want to get that front pan as far to the front as you can. Um, otherwise, you're going to run out of room here. Uh, and you can see how close I am. That's right to the edge. I ended up actually having to grind a little bit of this... Uh, cast iron off and you can see about how big my tabs were that seemed to be just about a perfect size it left a lot of exposure for the pans and um, I got a really nice burn um, in addition with that six foot stack coming off of the exhaust the draw was incredible um, so you really you'd just be building your fire up front and the flame would bridge across all the way to the back heat both the pans definitely would heat the back pan way hotter than the, this one um, so that's something to be aware of too in your planning um, another gotcha like i said before there's no good way to attack your stack to this there's just not enough room um, so i ended up actually notching my stack so that it would fit on either side i cut out a little notch in the the stovepipe here and here so it would slip down a little bit further um, and then you can see I put in four holes um, that I used self-tapping screws to, to secure it. it. Seemed to work good. It was really windy today and I was a little concerned that it was actually going to blow off um, and then cause me a bunch of issues. Luckily I'm done sugaring for the season or at least I'm done boiling. 
Um, now I got to start the like whole filtering and bottling process, but um, those are just a couple things I wanted to point out uh, that were kind of snafus during the process. Um, another thing that might deserve just a little bit of extra attention um, is how I set this up. Um, when I ordered this, it comes with a plastic ball. I didn't really want plastic sitting in the water the whole time um, in boiling water, so I replaced it with a copper ball. Um, somehow or another, some fluid got inside of it, so I ended up having to drill a hole in it to drain that out. Um, and that actually worked out pretty good. Any fluid that got inside would actually come out in the form of steam. Um, so that worked out pretty good. Um, again, this is a pretty simple setup, but you want to try to get this as close to the top of the pan as you can. Um, even with this, this straight bar, you're either going to have to bend this bar or nice thing about this copper tube is you can kind of bend it to where you want it to be. Um, and that's really easy. Um, so yeah, other than that, so this is a crazy boil. This is with a full pan. I actually had to dip some out of it because it kept boiling over. Just to show you the heat the stove can generate. 